What's up you guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, we're gonna be installing some wheel spacers onto my Tacoma. There's a reason to it. So before you guys blow me up in the comments or say anything to me, there's a reason for it, which I'll explain to you guys why. If at the end of the video, you guys do wanna get these exact spacers onto your Tacoma, I'll make sure to link them down in the description box below. Let's go ahead and now take this wheel off and install the wheel spacers. Let's go. So before we install the wheel spacers, I wanted to show you guys, as you guys can tell, uh, the tires don't really poke out too much. They're kind of sticking inside the fender. So once we install it, it's gonna be way better. Now that I do have the wheel off, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of explain to you guys why I'm gonna be installing wheel spacers onto my truck. If at the end of the video, you guys wanna go ahead and uh, get yours, they're gonna be in the description box below. So as far as for me, if you guys do remember, I ended up getting some brand new rims, which are right here. These are the KMC Beadlock Riot wheels. These are real beadlocks and on these it is a 17 by 9 with negative 12 offset with that being said it does push in the wheel uh, backspacing a little bit this way versus making the wheel poke out so if you guys do remember on my last wheel set that I had from summit those ones actually poked out more and allowing more space in the back over here and with that being said as you guys do remember uh, Jerry just recently installed some brand new smooth body Kings with the shock relation kit and stuff like that so now whenever i do go off road with these new wheels the truck does flex out and it actually does hit the smooth bodies and another thing up front right here that i did notice over time is i'm actually rubbing a lot right here as you guys can tell it's hitting here and it's actually hitting my lower control arm right here which this is really bad because if you guys do know on these toil open country mt tires they are 35s they're crazy expensive so if i start tearing these it's not going to be good it's gonna be an expensive repair so I want to go ahead and kind of combat that by putting some wheel spacers so that way the wheel can actually poke out now and I could avoid all this rubbing that I have here so I need to get some paint to paint this here and then of course right here we shouldn't be rubbing anymore at all which is gonna be awesome and hopefully in the back I won't be rubbing as much anymore as well on the shock body there so once again these wheels that I did get from KMC are freaking awesome they look really good and they're true beetle wheels as you guys can tell this is really good for off-road but that was the only problem that I had with them so we're gonna be fixing it with these brand new wheel spacers that we're gonna be installing right now once again if you guys do need any type of work as far as installations fabrications anything like that you guys can go ahead and hit up Jerry beast fab and his information is always in the description box below of every single video make sure you let him know I sent you over and so you guys can get a quote today so right now we're gonna install these bad boys we're gonna show you guys how it looks when we put the wheel back on because it is also going to give it a more aggressive look as the wheels are going to stick out more so let's get to that now so now that i explained kind of why i'm going to be installing some wheel spacers the ones i'm going to be installing are these bad boys right here from ksp performance there's a bunch of other brands out there of course i'm going to be using these in each box it does come with two so you can go ahead and do two for the front and two for the rear just in case you guys are curious as to what size i ended up going with what we have right here it's going to be the six and a half 1.25 one thing i did want to let you guys know these do come with the lugs here you guys will see where these go you are going to need some loctite to do this though i wouldn't just install them just like that another thing we wanted to let you guys know if you guys don't need to really run spacers we recommend probably not doing it especially if you do some hardcore off-roading so the first step you're going to want to go ahead and loctite each and every one of these lugs so there should be six of course on the tacoma and like i said if you guys are installing the wheel spacers um, it's only if you need it if you do not need it we don't recommend it but if you do Loctite is the way to go and then another thing we want to let you know is over time especially after you've gone off-road just make sure these things haven't got loose or anything like that we are going to torque them down but you want to make sure they do not get loose one thing we also wanted to tell you guys if you guys do end up for some reason needing to install some wheel spacers I'd recommend only going 1.25 and downwards do not go anything bigger anything bigger is going to end up probably cracking your studs reason I say that is because it pushes it out so much that it's barely gonna grab the lugs that are in there so keep that in mind when choosing wheel spacers right now 
what Jerry's doing is all right you guys so one thing we did want to let you guys know is when installing any type of spacer you do not want to hit it with an impact gun it looks like Jerry was doing it but all he's really doing is just slightly tightening it a little bit inwards just so that way we don't have to be tightening it by hand so much uh, so once we got it to a position that we like I'm gonna go ahead and now get the socket and just basically do it by hand uh, we're gonna tighten it down to spec and like I said we put the lock tight in before so that should help with the threads staying in and that way the nuts don't come out whenever I do go off-road but once again over time I do have to check these over and over just to make sure nothing is coming out we aren't running wheel spacers is a little bit risky I'm not going to lie but once again I keep rephrasing this if you guys do need it specifically on yours just like me then go ahead and do it you want to just go ahead and make sure to choose a reputable brand KSP performance for one is what I'm installing today so now that I've explained that to you guys uh, one more thing Jerry wanted to tell you guys as far as a tip now that we've of course hand tightened those down to kind of where we want them we're gonna go ahead and now torque them down with the torque wrench before doing that though you do want to go ahead and uh, keep this in mind and this is the tip that Jerry wanted to give you guys if you guys do notice on your guys's rotors you're gonna have kind of like grooves in there so you want to go over here where the caliper is and you're gonna notice we've inserted a pick tool inwards of course this one is a pretty beefy one so it's inwards right here in between the caliper where kind of the rotors are the pads are we've inserted it into one of these holes there as you guys can tell and the reason we're gonna do that is because when we go to torque it down if you guys don't do that the rotors gonna end up spinning and your torque spec is going to be off and you do not want that talking about torque spec uh, now for the specific brand which is KSP performance and for this specific truck which is the 2020 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road 4x4 we do need to do uh, 95 foot-pounds of torque so make sure to refer to the instruction manual as far as the brand and truck that you guys are installing these on when installing this is you want to make sure to do this in a cross pattern and what I mean by that is you want to go ahead and of course torque down this side then go down here and then like this like this like that like that and just onwards until you're correct with the specs you want to do it in a cross pattern that way just that way when you're tightening it down everything gets pushed in correctly if you start doing it in a circle you're gonna probably have a bulge this way or that way and it's not gonna be seating properly and over time it's gonna end up snapping breaking causing a lot of damage you do not want that one more tip uh, Jerry did want to give you guys and we've told you guys this in the past in many other videos is always mark the bolts that way you can recheck it and make sure to see if the nut ended up moving or not uh, of, uh, of course over time you do want to just keep checking them no matter what still get the torque wrench check it out but that mark is just kind of a point of reference to really check it right away I do want to give a big shout out to KSP performance for actually sponsoring today's video and hooking me up with these these bad boys once again we are going to do a review on them down the road so we're going to kind of see how they perform I'm going to take the truck off road and stuff like that and then we'll check the bolts and just kind of see if it snapped or not once again if you want them they're going to be in the description box below huge shout out to KSP if you want to go ahead and check them out they'll be in the description box below along with their Instagram just like Jerry's is always in every video so now that we got the wheel and tire on I did want to let you guys know if you guys do remember on the wheel spacer itself when we installed it to the actual uh, rotor and hub on that you did want to go ahead and torque it down but you wanted to do everything by hand so now that being said now you also have to do the same thing without here so right now we're just kind of driving it in with the gun but we're not going to tighten it down all the way after we've kind of put them in one place just to have them in there then we're going to go ahead and torque them down by hand so if you guys do end up getting wheel spacers please keep that in mind if you guys do use an impact gun on it well, trust me you're going to end up snapping them over time and you're going you're going to regret it so by me telling you this right now and jerry letting you guys know you guys will thank us later so keep that in mind torque it down by hand not with the gun and then once again just do the x pattern same process does apply to the other side so we've already finished up that side now let me go ahead and kind of show you guys how it looks so now that everything's installed and now you guys can kind of see the cool thing about this is like i had told you guys in the beginning i didn't get it for the looks but the cool thing it does help uh, the wheel stands kind of stick out a little more so now the tires in the rear are actually matching with the tires in the front so right now what i'm going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and drive the truck kind of in circles and we're going to 
gonna show you guys that it doesn't rub in that spot anymore. One thing I did wanna let you guys know, it probably is gonna rub in another section, but I'm not too worried about that, which I'll show you guys right now in a minute what I mean about that. But let's get a closer shot for you guys so you see what I mean. So as you guys can tell, it does give it that nice little stance now as far as the wheel poke. So it looks really good, it makes it look a lot beefier. It looks really good. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to let you guys know is if you guys do remember, it was rubbing inside the frame in there, especially on the passenger side, that was the worst. Uh, now with these wheel spacers, it did help push it out. So it's not rubbing anymore, which I'll show you guys right now. But what I was saying is on the passenger side, I know it's probably gonna start rubbing here now, which is on the actual firewall. Uh, the thing there though, I'm not as worried. Only reason why is this here, I've hammered it down in the past, so it's already kind of uh, nice and smooth. So even if it were to hit there, it's not gonna tear into the tire. As far as over there on that side, if you guys do remember in the last clip, uh, it was rubbing on the lower control arm, it was rubbing on the frame. So that was kind of causing Causing me some scareness because it, it tears into the tire it could be bad for the frame overall and it could end up tearing my lower control arm or messing something up and I did not want that so once again if it rubs here it's not gonna be a problem because it's just gonna be rubbing on a nice smooth surface so let's go ahead and just test this out all right you guys so right now I do have it on full lock and I don't know if you guys can see down there look how far away that is I wish I would have taken a shot for you guys but before the tire was actually hitting the frame like completely and then the bottom of the tire down there it was rubbing onto the lower control arm like I said these tires are expensive and I didn't want it to tear into that uh, my other worry though if you guys can see here now it does push it out this way but I'm not as worried because this here is smooth I mean as you can tell I don't know if you can see it on the camera but it's smooth to the touch this ain't gonna tear anything I've already pushed this back so even if it's rubbing here that's not gonna be an issue anymore of course I would like it not to rub but that's probably for a later video I may have someone uh, cut this completely and push the whole firewall back but like I said that's for a different video and that's if I want to do 37s as of now I'm pretty satisfied so right now we're gonna go ahead and drive it and uh, you're gonna listen for uh, any rubbing nothing going on there no more rubbing and then uh, we'll go ahead and try the other way and as you can tell it clears it very well all right so now we're gonna come back this way and you're gonna see right there. The only time it is gonna rub here on the cab, it's not gonna be on on-road driving. As you guys can tell, we are on road. It's only gonna be rubbing when I am off-road. But once again, and I keep telling you guys this because I know someone's gonna point it out, uh, this I'm not worried about. It was back there that I was worried about. So of course, today was a super simple install. If you guys do wanna go ahead and buy yours, make sure to check out the description box below. But we do gotta give a big shout out to Jerry, of course. He's the owner of Beast Fab. Make sure to go follow him on Instagram. As you guys do know in every single video, his information always in the description box below so if you guys do need any simple installs like today or any difficult installs fabrication anything like that make sure to hit him up let him know I sent you over for an awesome deal and just want to let you guys know for those of you guys that are probably new he's the one that's pretty much built my whole truck if I haven't done it it's most likely something he did so keep that in mind <laughs> So heck yeah, we want to thank you guys. Check us out on Instagram. If you guys did like today's video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.